We are currently in the face of a rapidly accelerating international financial collapse. Billions are being threatened by a water crisis combined with a global food shortage, and the repeated failure of political leadership to competently address these matters has made the overall crisis even worse. Given this state of the world around you, wouldn't it be a proper occasion to ask, what actually governs your society? Take the fanaticism around global warming. The science indicates that these changes in the Earth's climate are determined by solar cycles, orbital changes, and interstellar radiation. Yet even potentially decent leaders are still going along with the green policies that will vastly accelerate the economic breakdown. So if it's not a matter of science, then what is driving our nation down a path of green fascism? To be clear on these matters, examine how the British Empire created the modern environmentalist movement. The ideological and political basis is demonstrated by the founders of the movement, Julian Huxley, Prince Bernard of the Netherlands, and the Duke of Edinburgh, Prince Philip. These three have played key roles for the British Empire going back to before World War II. Following in the footsteps of his grandfather, Thomas Huxley, known as one of the pioneers of race science, Julian Huxley was obsessed with population control and eugenics. He continued his grandfather's legacy, acting as vice president of the British Eugenics Society during the bulk of World War II, and later became president. Julian was, by all means, not shy about his disgust for humanity. The lowest strata of people are reproducing too fast. Therefore, they must not have too easy access to relief or hospital treatment lest the removal of the last check on natural selection should make it too easy for children to be produced or to survive. Long unemployment should be a grounds for sterilization. Around the same time period, in the 1930s, Prince Philip was being educated at the elite school of Salem Castle in Germany, while it was being run by the Nazis, who had made race science at the core of the curriculum. Many of his relatives were themselves either pro-Nazi or members of the SS, while Philip developed secret ties with the pro-Nazi British king Edward VIII. Oh, and speaking of British Empire Nazis, Prince Bernard of the Netherlands was recruited to Nazi intelligence at Berlin University in 1934. He then became a member of the SS and went to work for IG Farben, which pioneered Halmar Schock's slave labor concentration camps. Even when he was forced to resign from the Nazi SS for political reasons relating to his marriage, he maintained his unwavering loyalty to the Nazi party up to the very last moment, signing his letter of resignation, Heil Hitler. In return, Hitler sent him a congratulatory letter for his marriage. Obviously, the publicity of the atrocities committed during World War II made eugenics and Nazism not too popular after the war. Julian Huxley pulled away from his public support of eugenics and became the first head of the United Nations Educational, Social, and Cultural Organization. He stated in UNESCO's founding document, Thus, even though it is quite true that radical eugenics policy will be for many years politically and psychologically impossible, it will be important for UNESCO to see that the public mind is informed of the issues at stake so that much that is now unthinkable may at least become thinkable. Soon after, Huxley co-founded the International Union for the Conservation of Nature to continue the British Empire's population control and eugenics policy under a new name, conservation, or as it was later called, environmentalism. Prince Philip likewise took up the cause of environmentalism, taking a personal commitment to reduce the global population by billions. As he later expressed in multiple interviews, he wishes to be reincarnated as a deadly virus to aid in reducing the world population. By 1960, a 74-year-old Julian Huxley decided to take an extensive three-month tour of Africa. Why? To preach that the newly independent African nations could not be trusted to conserve wildlife. The following year, Huxley would join up with Prince Philip and Prince Bernard to found the World Wildlife Fund as a new front for the British Empire to continue their imperial genocidal policies. This is the ideological basis for the creation of the so-called environmentalist movement. Hatred of human scientific and technological progress, driven by the utterly degenerate view of mankind as nothing but an animal, a beast to be trained and manipulated, conditioned and culled, the desire of the empire to reduce the world population down to one to two billion people and keep the vast majority of those remaining in a backwards indigenous state. 
Here we find the philosophical core of the countercultural attack directed at the baby boomer generation. From Silent Spring to the population bomb, they were subjected to psychological warfare intended to break the United States culture away from any commitment toward actual human progress. The baby boomers were conditioned to believe that man was a scourge on the planet, and any desire to improve mankind's living conditions, especially through application of nuclear power, must be stopped. The global warming hoax was introduced in 1975 through a conference organized by Margaret Mead. Bringing together the followers of this anti-human doctrine in the United States, the entire conference was run under the presumptions that mankind's development was inherently going to devastate the planet. That was the only thing that mattered to the organizers of the conference. Scientific accuracy was secondary and only relevant to the degree that it could be manipulated to justify their desired policy of halting progress and reducing the population. The conference featured followers of Paul Ehrlich, whose fraudulent work, The Population Bomb, was a reintroduction of the work of Thomas Malthus. Ehrlich himself believed that we should cut the U.S. population in half. Typical of Ehrlich's followers at this 1975 conference was Stephen Schneider, notorious for saying, To capture the public imagination, we have to offer up some scary scenarios, make simplified dramatic statements, and little mention of any doubts one might have. Each of us has to decide the right balance between being effective and being honest. Schneider later became a major participant in the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the supposed scientific authority regarding global warming. Under the direction of Meade, the emphasis of the 1975 conference was not science, but on obtaining a consensus agreement on the proper scare stories needed to push their policy. As Meade said herself at the conference, what we need from scientists are estimates presented with sufficient conservatism and plausibility, but at the same time as free as possible from internal disagreements that can be exploited by political interests. That will allow us to start building a system of artificial but effective warnings. Warnings which will parallel the instincts of animals who flee before the hurricane. It was out of this conference that the hoax of man-made global warming was born. This was never about science. It is the British Empire's policy for genocide. So before you react or come to a consensus with your friends and neighbors, make sure you actually know where your impulses are coming from. Just because you share an opinion, how do you know it's really yours?